afternoon, Rap News is back online. Today we take on and analyze one of the most intractable, divisive, ongoing violent divides to happen in our time. The 60-year conflict going on betwixt Israel and Palestine. Is there a one state, two state, or no straight solution to this protracted fight? From Camp David to Madrid, Tarba to Oslo, for decades back in time, all peace talks have devolved into violent rows, and roadmap to peace have led nowhere but more war. Until now! Welcome to the first Middle East peace raps. This afternoon, Rap News is proud of this tremendous chance to prove the peace-filled art of rap could chart the best roadmap to start a new. So first up, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Shalom. Bibi being ready this whole time to engage the peace process with war crimes. I mean raw rhymes. All right. Well, we'd like to bring the whole story to light. Please begin by telling us Israel's side. How did this war arise? The fact is, my people have suffered awful tragedies. Centuries of persecution. Diaspora. We were slaughtered, massacred. In the shore, Hitler tried to have us wiped off the map and thus we sought a safe harbor. A place to gather us. Some told us, go to Argentina. Others, go to Uganda. But we said, go fuck yourselves. And like Exodus, we came back to our biblical homeland, Eretz Israel, which the Lord handed us, and then in 1948 we declared the birth of the Jewish state. Your people have indeed suffered massively, unimaginably, and should have sanctuary, not just in the Middle East, but wherever they happen to be. However, isn't the Holy Land holy also to Christians and Muslims? How can you claim that only Jews own the land and exclude them? With the Six Day War, we fulfilled our Zionist covenant, invaded Jerusalem, the West Bank, Golan and Gaza, taking all of it. The occupied territory. Then on the seventh day we rested, and when all the world's nations witnessed this great event they condemned it? What? It seems the UN issued Resolution 242 Wait, calling on Israel to give back those territories and withdraw troops. Hey, hey, are you denying the legitimacy of the Jewish state? I I'm just trying to... Anti-Semites! Wait, what? Everybody, this guy's a Nazi. Okay, okay, just let's relax. Jew hater. We've yet to ask the rival party. We now cross direct to Gaza to check the raps of a Palestinian spokesperson representing Hamas. Salam, as you can see, we are ready to talk peace, but only within the 1967 borders will we recognize Israel and sign deals? Oh yeah? Recognize this. <laughs> Kapow! A mess? Now he looks more like hummus. What a mess. Mr. Netanyahu, you killed him. I guess. But it was in self-defense. Mm, no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Yes. Check out the news coverage from the US. I'm Brian Washington. You're on MSMBS. Tonight's headlines, peace process shattered yet again by unprovoked attacks from Arab terrorists. Israel retaliates with airstrikes in self-defense. Meanwhile, in the West Bank, Palestinian suicide homes are ramming themselves into peaceful Israeli bulldozers. Israel is under threat, which is why, as shown on this map, its settlements have, um, steadily expanded. How can we end this injustice? To explain, we welcome John Kerry, Secretary of State. Great to be back, Bucky. And don't you stress a bit, American taxpayers have got Israel covered till I'm Armageddon hits. No country gets more U.S. foreign aid sent to it. $140 billion since the 70s. Plus military weaponry. No conditions or strings with it. No conditions at all? Well, we would prefer it better if they could kindly stop using our money to build new illegal sediments. What did you say, you schmuck? Baby! Oh, uh, no, I was just telling just them. Just keep sending the money, schmickle. Yes, sir. We'll write the check. Wait, we're getting a call from some Jewish guy in Brooklyn. He's on the line with us. An American Jew? He's bound to be pro-Zionist. Let him speak. Hello, MSNBS? Um, yes, you're on the screen. This is Norman Finkelstein ringing in to state the truth in this case. Israel is a lunatic state. It's no excuse to steal Palestinian land because Jews suffer genocide at Hitler's hands. A self-hating Jew. Everybody, this guy's an Ashkenazi. Shut up, BB. And I also condemn American policy of funding the theft of Palestinian territory. Okay, Funkelstein, we get the gist of all this. Now where were we? Financing war crimes. That's a straight fact. Well done, America. Thank APEC. They got us by the tank sacks. We have to wave that Star of David flag. But it's worth paying cash to have Israel's back. That's true. They're the only nation in the Muslim backwoods that shares our American values. Give us some examples. We both love trampling international law. Constantly. We're both nuclear states and democracies. With terrorist foreign policies. And obviously, both America and Israel. We're built by occupying territories of native peoples. We're, we're both settler colonies. Awesome. Publicity time. Keep your eyes on the screen. Hey, I'm Scarlett Johansson, and my real job is promoting illegal occupations. It's easy. You start by taking other people's land and water, send in Zionist settlers, push the natives out of their homes, causing bloodshed, and look, settlers dream better for Israel and all of us. 
ScarJo looks delicious, and what's more, it reminds me of our very own sponsor, Redskin Genocider, flavor of the American nation, bloody good, tasteful. So, Israel is a settler colony, like Canada, America, and Australia. Ah, our colonial assessor is in the area. Does Israel pass the test, Kenoka? Kenoka? Yeah. I'm in Jerusalem. And what's going on over there? I'm celebrating the day of Israel's birth, Yom Hetzmaut, which roughly translates to Australia Day. And wow, it's like back home. Barbies, flags, beers. So in solidarity, I got the end of me not chopped off. It's patriotic, apparently. What do Palestinians make of this day? I don't know, eh? Hmm, perhaps you should ask them. Okay, I'll ask the natives. Wait. Oi, hello, can you hear me? Salam! Hey, how do you celebrate this wonderful day? We natives participate with smiling faces in this party, mate. Just like your Aboriginal people on invasion day. And I was cast out from the lands of my mom and my father. Now I dance as an outcast to the bombs of Gaza. And we sing Israel, your independence is our Nakba. Sounds great. I love a party with a snack bar. Not a snack bar, crocodile dandy. Nakba. It means a catastrophe. Anti-Semitic. It's far from truth. We are far from home. Zionism is far from Jews. How can I explain it to you? We lost our rights that day. And our barbecues. No Barbies. That's a tragedy. How can we help you? BDF, yani muqaza, hai tariqa. Bistajim fi Tel Aviv, zay listajam fi Janub Afrika. Saidna nwaqib jinoon al mutawtin. Saidna nibni dole fi hashwayat mumtik. Mish dole til Yahud, bel dole lal Yahud. Lal Masihiyya, lal Muslimin, la Yosi, la Abud, la Jiriyas, u la Mel Gibson. What the fuck, shu khas Mel Gibson? Well, it seems that despite the use of rap and rhyme, we failed to seal a real peace deal between Israel and Palestine. Nevertheless, I hope we've expanded our minds and are prepared to share some final thoughts before we wrap for the night. This might seem like some battle entwining other people in another time, but in fact it mirrors back our own greatest challenge, to live side by side, no matter race, flags, or which invisible man we pray to in the sky. And that is why there'll be peace nowhere until there's peace in Palestine. The war is over, if we wanted to borrow Lenin's line. It was pressure from outside that ended the crime of apartheid that turned terrorists into winners of the peace prize. The question is, can we learn history's lessons and apply them in our time? When we analyze our direction, it's clear where the answers lie. Does any state hold the power to change the tide? Or is the one safe solution for us to unify rather than divide? Not just in the Middle East, but globally, far and wide. Good night. <laughs>